On your mark, get set. That's chapter 1.5. We're going to continue talking about the physical components of a network. This time, we're going to talk about a couple famous servers. No, not those kind of servers. I'm talking about the DNS server and the data storage server. DNS stands for Domain Name System. Let's talk about that first. Now, remember earlier we talked about how networks use IP addresses to find out each other's location and know where to send data. Kind of like the same way we use our home address to send mail. But wait, when you want to go to, let's say, Google.com, you don't just type in an IP address, right? Nope. You would type in Google.com on your web browser. The words Google.com is called the URL. URL is short for Uniform Resource Locator, by the way. But don't worry about memorizing that. The cool kids just call it URL. So anyways, you open up your web browser and type in the URL, google.com, and press enter. Well, guess where it goes first? It's going to go through your router and switches till it gets to your DNS server. Then your DNS server is designed to look at your request and say, oh, you're trying to go to google.com. Let me look that up on my chart. Then it looks up a table and says, oh, here you go. In order to get to google.com, you'll need to go to the IP address of 66.102.0.0. The DNS then sends you the IP address direction, and now your computer knows where to go. It finds Google server on the internet, and that web server sends your Google homepage to your computer, which you see on your screen. Yeah, so all of that happens within a matter of less than a second, after you typed in the URL. It's pretty cool, huh? Now let's look at another type of server. Let's look at the storage server. A data storage server job is to help the users have a place to store their data outside of their computer. Data, for example, could be an Excel spreadsheet created by a budget specialist. The financial information in that Excel file is data. In my home network on my personal laptop, I can save my data locally on my laptop's hard drive. If you open up the bottom of your laptop, you could see the physical location of your laptop's hard drive, but I don't recommend you doing that. Logically, hard drive location are usually labeled by a letter. Here, let me show you on my computer. See here, I have a Windows 10. I'll just type in this PC. Now, under devices and drives, I can see my hard drive is labeled as the C drive. So anything that I save on this C drive will physically be stored on my laptop hard drive. For example, if I create a budget spreadsheet like this, I click on Save As. Here, I can select which drive my data is stored under. You can see my C drive is right here. And if we click up here, you can actually see the C drive being labeled. Well, in an enterprise network, I have two options. I can either save my files locally onto my laptop, or I can save it on my data storage server. We'll add that on our network diagram. The data storage server is usually a server with a whole bunch of hard drives in it. The server contains a software that manages and shares hard drive space among different users. So when Bob creates a user account on the Active Directory, it is configured to automatically create a personal hard drive space for that user account. So let's say data storage server has this much space in it to hold network data. When we create a user account for, let's say, Agent 1 on Active Directory, the storage server will automatically allocate this much space specifically for Agent 1. Then let's say Agent 2 gets hired and Bob creates another AD account. Well, then Agent 2 automatically gets her own network storage space as well. Now, let's say Agent 1 and Agent 2 need to have access and update a document together. Well, then someone will need to create a shared space for them on the storage server. So then Bob can set a policy to only allow Agent 1 and Agent 2 to this drive space and no one else. This type of shared space is referred to as the shared drive. Another thing about a storage server in an enterprise network, it is usually configured for automatic backups. This means that if the drive space that was allocated for me stops working, aka becomes corrupted, well there's a backup server ready and willing to replace the data. Okay, that's all the servers I'm going to detail for you. In the next video, I'm going to highlight the benefits of having servers in an enterprise network. Stay tuned.